Welcome to the Pub Sports Radio NBA Closing Time Show, Friday, February 19th. Ian Cameron, Ski, Prophet, and Connor Mack are with you, ready to break down the Friday NBA card. Good to be back with you. We had some technical issues yesterday, but uh, we're back up and running uh, today uh, and ready to move forward, breaking down a busy uh, Friday uh, NBA card as usual. Uh, we've got uh, nine games on tap, so uh, let's get started. Top of the rotation here for this Friday slate, we've got the Golden State Warriors and the Orlando Magic Warriors. Golden State four point home favorites here, 224 and a half the total uh, in this game. Uh, the Orlando Magic and the uh, Warriors just actually met uh, recently uh, last Thursday, uh, and uh, the Orlando Magic lost that one 111 to 105. Uh, and now a rematch just a week later between these two teams in Orlando. But if Golden State's going to be looking across the floor tonight and probably see a team that looks totally different from the Magic team they saw last week. I mean, they've got a lot of their key cogs back. Uh, Evan Fournier came back the last game, played extremely well. He missed five games, came back against the Knicks, played extremely well in that game uh, against uh, New York, uh, getting the magic a very impressive victory. Uh, Nikola Vucevic just continues to be dominant in the low post uh, for the magic, 16 and 16, double-double for him against the Knicks the other night. Uh, so he's playing at a very, very high level. And that's a particular concern tonight for Golden State in this matchup because they are depleted in the front court right now. You're talking about Kevon Looney still out. You're talking about James Weissman still out. Uh, Draymond Green didn't play the last game, although Steve Kerf, well, I read something from him yesterday that he said he expects – Draymond Green to be in the, the lineup tonight and on the floor for the Warriors, but definitely some concerns with the way Vucevic is, go, Vucevic is going right now uh, that he might be able to feast on this depleted front line of the Golden State Warriors tonight. Look, Orlando's got healthier, and that was a pretty impressive win to not just beat New York, but absolutely uh, beat the tar out of them the way they did. Uh, 107-89, you know, they hung tough with Golden State in San Francisco at New Oracle just a week ago. And now they get them again at home. I haven't been looking to bet Orlando a lot, but I'm leaning to them here as home dogs, plus four a little bit uh, in this game. What do you think, Ski, with uh, Golden State taking on Orlando? Well, Orlando is finally more healthy now. Um, still not as healthy as they like to be, but I, I think the way I look at this game depends on the status of Draymond Green. If he's in, uh, I like Golden State. And if he's out, uh, I can understand it. Look towards the other way, but Golden State nine and two versus lesser competition, forty five percent win teams or less. They've won four out of their last five games, and when they win, I feel like they win by margin. I look at Orlando, and this is um, what is it with one or less days rest, and they're a home dog versus fifty five percent win teams are better. O thirteen and one against the spread the last fourteen, and that's O and three against the spread this year, and the under is three and zero this year, so. I think if, if Draymond is out, I like the under because Golden State's offense is not going to be as fluent. And if go, if Draymond is in, um, I like Golden State. All right, so dependent on uh, Draymond Green stats. Yeah, I kind of I agree with that. I definitely would lean Orlando, but I like Orlando more uh, if Draymond Green doesn't play. Nevertheless, the one thing I do like, regardless of anything, is Vucevic over points, rebounds, I think you look at that from a prop standpoint tonight. Look, it's the 32 combined points and rebounds uh, against the Knicks. You're going to have very little size down low tonight for the Warriors with the injuries they've gotten even more so if Green doesn't play. So that's potentially a night here and an opponent in a matchup where Vucevic have a ton of success for the Magic, and he's been uh, obviously playing well. There were nights that he was the only guy – uh, producing for them when they had all those injuries. He'd be the only guy you could count on for the Magic. So I think he's probably got a favorable matchup tonight uh, against this depleted front line, front court uh, of Golden State. What do you think, Connor, with uh, Magic and Warriors? Yeah, I like the Magic here. Um, a little bit catching the four. Now I see fours across the board. Um, I should have bet it four and a half. A lot of money coming to them. I think the, the matchup's not that great. I think I think it kind of favors Golden State, um, but a difficult one. Golden State just beat them. Uh, they're coming on the road. I had Golden State in that Heat game, and I thought no way I was going to win that one. And they <laughs> came back OT and won it, so I was shocked. I just think the matchup's kind of different. But all the way to Orlando, I think this would be a spot with the Magic um, getting a few guys back. Still, Anthony's out. They still got a bunch of other guys not in. And Vucevic, yeah, he's been – he's their guy. He's a one-man 
you know, some of those games where they were losing by 15, he'd be the only guy going. But I don't want to lay four with Golden State on the road right now. They're not that good of a team to be laying that many points, even at four, I think, on the road. So I think the only play is uh, taking the points with Orlando. And the total, I think it's right, right spot on. Don't really love the over, under. I'd, I'd lean more under in this spot at 224 and a half. So I'm passing on the total. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, – you're right. There's still a couple guys well, – obviously, Aaron Gordon, we know, ain't coming back anytime soon yeah. for the Magic and, and uh, uh, Cole Anthony out. But thank goodness they got MCW at least back, Michael Carter-Williams, and uh, that's at least helped, especially uh, with uh, Cole Anthony uh, down. So that's definitely helped the Magic a little bit, at least getting him back and uh, uh, better deal with uh, the absence of Anthony. We've got the uh, Chicago Bulls and the Philadelphia 76ers next up. Uh, Philadelphia, uh, eight, eight-and-a-half-point home favorites. Uh, the total 228 uh, across the board here in this game. Uh, I'll tell you what, this Chicago Bulls team, this is th there's no give up in this basketball team. I mean, they had every right in the world, every reason in the world to say it's not our night, put our hands up in the air and say, guess what? We're going to just not our night against the Detroit Pistons. We're down 21 at halftime. It's just, we're just not, it's just not going to be our night. They didn't do that. Uh, they put their head down. They chipped away at the lead, chipped away, chipped away, battled back. Uh, Zach Levine does his thing. He's been ridiculous, continues to be amazing for the Bulls, and they rally all the way back from 21 down to the Detroit Pistons and win that game the other night. Uh, impressive comeback for the uh, Chicago Bulls. And, yeah, I can question Billy Donovan's X's and O's and his in-game adjustments, and I kind of didn't like the way he did things with the Thunder against Houston in that playoff series uh, in the bubble. Uh, but I'd, I've said this many a time on this show. He can get the most out of young players. He can work well with them. He's done that here uh, with the Chicago Bulls so far this season. And you talk about spots and situations and numbers where you're interested in roles, point spread roles that where you're more interested in backing Chicago. This is that role. Road underdog, stepping up in class. They've done very well. They've they've really put forth some of their greater efforts. They went on the road against teams like, you know, the Clippers early in the season, you know, teams like Brooklyn earlier in the season where they're road dogs and they're just going in there and battling and covering numbers and staying in the game. I think that could happen here against the uh, Sixers. I know the Sixers have played great. They're the uh, probably them in Brooklyn as of right now. You'd probably have to say those look like the two best teams in the Eastern Conference right now. Uh, but Philadelphia coming off, I know they had a much better game. They had a rough end of the road trip. They bounced back against Houston, but Houston's absolutely miserable right now. So I do not want to put too much stock in what the Sixers did the other night uh, against that Houston Rockets team. The way Chicago, and the thing that encourages me too about the Bulls after seeing what they did against the Pistons, if they get down in a basketball game and trail, they're not going to quit. They're not going to lay down and wave the white flag and surrender. They're going to keep on coming at you. They did it against the Pistons. And even if they're down by 10 or 12 points in this game at some point, I don't think that's the end-all be-all for the Bulls. They've got that internal you know, toughness, mental toughness to battle back. They've, that's just been something that we have seen from this Bulls more times than not, where they've played so well in the second half of some of these games. So I think they've got a chance to hang in there tonight against Philadelphia. They've shown the ability to cover numbers as road dogs against upper tier competition. I think they could do the same here. I'm looking at Chicago here, plus the eight and a half in this game. Uh, Connor, we'll start with you here with this one. Uh, Bulls taking on the uh, 76ers. Yeah, I like the Bulls here. Um, I just took it at eight and a half and I see it dipping mostly eights across the board. I just love them in the road dogs here catching this many points and a Philly team that's, you know, hasn't been playing well lately. Um, the only thing is I was a little hesitant. This is where you back Philly. They're at home. Um, they're way better than they are on the road, especially the last couple of years. Um, but you got to do it at a premium. Um, we'll see. You guys still have game time decision with the uh, Simmons. Simmons is in. Simmons is going to be back here. For he's the in. Six. Okay, Shake I have game Milton. time. Shake Milton's not back. Shake Milton doesn't look like he's okay. going to play. Uh, Shake Milton okay. is not going to play, but Simmons looks like he's good to go. And I kind of figured, I expected him to be in there, so I like Chicago regardless of his status, even with Me him too. in there. Yeah, I was just double-checking. I had game time here. Um, yeah, I still like the Bulls. Um, I'm, I think it's enough here. They're feisty on the road. We'll see. Um I'm worried. This is where the Sixers always have these good games at home where they could win by double digits. Um, but right now in this game, I'd rather take the points than lay it. And on the total, 
I trend to the over in this one. I haven't bet it yet, but I'd only lean a little bit towards the over in this one. Uh, the Bulls, you know, they are the Sixers are nine and five ATS. I've got them uh, in terms of their home record uh, against home. the spread, nine and five. But Chicago's ten and three uh, against the spread on the road. So uh, it's even trumped by what the Bulls have been able to do uh, away from home. And uh, yeah, I mean Philadelphia coming off that road trip, they blew out Houston, who's just in shambles right now. Chicago ain't in shambles, far from it. Uh, I think they could give the Sixers a game. Ski, what do you think here with Chicago against Philly? Uh, I agree with mostly both of you guys, but um, this is, like you said, this is the role you want Chicago in. That road dog, they're nine one against the spread as their road dog. They've been playing well. They've won four out of their last six games. Levine, he does it every single night. Kobe White kind of had an off night the last game, but I think I like Chicago uh, to put up points in this one. And on the Philly side, like you said, Milton, he's doubtful. Simmons, he's probably going to play. And in B, whether he plays or not, I just think he's like um, – his back is not 100%. So uh, I don't think you're getting a full strength in B. And I, I just like Chicago. Philly hasn't been covering numbers lately. And just being kind of banged up, I would take Chicago plus the points. And if I'm playing the total, I probably would agree to go towards the over. Both teams play at a top 10 pace over the last five games. So I think that they can get up and down and uh, get over the total. Yeah, I would lean over too. I'd love the over even more. Like I, I'd, and I probably love Chicago even more if Simmons was out because Simmons being out would be a boon to the over. One of the best defenders, obviously, uh, on this 76ers team and having to guard, guard the perimeter without him uh, on the floor against this Chicago team with the likes of Kobe White and Zach Levine, who's been a terror lately. Uh, that would be dangerous stuff for the Sixers team, but they will have Simmons. But nevertheless, I would. I still think this game's got a chance maybe to uh, get up and over the total, but I like the side a little bit more than that uh, in this one. Atlanta, Boston, we've got the uh, Celtics four point home favorites here, 225 and a half, 226 the total in this one. I had Boston uh, as well as the over in the uh, first meeting uh, a couple nights ago against Atlanta uh, without Kemba Walker. Uh, Sixers or Celtics rather just didn't seem they had a lot of juice and a lot of energy uh, left in their tank in the second half, uh, especially the fourth quarter. They kept trying to get back into it. They always kept, you know, trimming the Atlanta lead down to like two points or four points in that game. And then every time they did, the Atlanta Hawks would answer uh, with a nice little run of their own. So give Atlanta credit. They had been struggling, but they beat Boston uh, in that game. Uh, it was probably the best fourth quarter closeout of a game that the Hawks have had uh, in quite some time. Uh, of course, Lord uh, Lloyd Pierce is away from the team. Uh, birth of his uh, second child. So it looks like it's going to be the assistant coach, Nate McMillan, uh, running the sideline again tonight uh, for the Atlanta Hawks here uh, in this game. Uh, I think Boston probably can bounce back here. I'd certainly look that way. Uh, I, and I'll also look over. I mean, Nick, McMillan was saying, you know, we want to establish tempo. It starts with Trey. We want to keep Trey getting pressure on them, pushing the ball, uh, looking to attack. And Atlanta talked about trying to speed it up prior to the Boston game. They did, and it worked for them. They won. The game went over the total. I think this time around, though, I would look a little bit to Boston. I don't know if I trust Atlanta to win two in a row in Boston, and it's a short enough number where I would probably look to lay the four points here uh, with the Celtics. And I don't mind taking the over probably one more time either. Current total, uh, 225 and a half here in this game. Ski, what do you think with Hawks-Celtics, uh, the rematch? Yeah, I don't think I mind. He's you're muted. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. I agree with the over, but um, as far as the side, I have to double check again. Just make sure I, I pushed on mute again. But Atlanta three and six against the spread. Their last nine. I know they won the last game against Boston, but that should give Boston even more motivation to come out and focus here. And Danny Ainge was, was talking about uh, the team in general and just said that they're not championship contenders. The roster is not good. So I think um, they come out early in this game and kind of show them how good they are. I, I like Boston early. And um, I, like I said, I would agree with the over. All right. So Boston, maybe look first quarter, first half, and uh, maybe, and the over for first half. Team. First half? Okay, first half first with half. Boston and uh, full game over uh, with the uh, Celtics. Looks like Kemba Walker missed the game against Atlanta, uh, the first game uh, on Wednesday. He will be back, it looks like, on, on the floor tonight for the Celtics. Uh, Connor, what do you think here, Atlanta-Boston? 
Yeah, with the total, I'm in agreement. I would lean over. I was on the over in the first matchup. I think the Celtics are the play tonight. Um, I think they come back and play better. You're right. Kind of chitter chat. They're just not a championship team. And, you know, maybe they could be. I think they, they do kind of have the talent depending on how they go, especially in the East. Um, but I like them here. Minus four. I think Celtics can get it done. Um, Ski's got a point, though. Celtics, I did it last year. Um, a ton in the playoffs later towards the year. Celtics are a great first half team. Um, I took took them a ton of times. So if you guys are a little scared with the Celtics, first half might be a good look. They were a great uh, first half cover. Uh, I know last year. I don't know what their record is exactly this year. I'd have to look that up. But uh, yeah, I like it. First half full game. I think the Celtics get re- revenge tonight and win. Uh, all right. Next up, we've got Detroit. Actually, you know what? We'll get to Detroit and Memphis in a second. We got to do one of the seven o'clock, seven thirty games. That's actually down at the bottom of the rotation because it's a write-in game, rescheduled game. It's Denver uh, taking on Cleveland. We've got uh, Denver nine-point road favorites, two twenty-five and a half uh, the total in this game. Uh, it's definitely been a tough uh, run for the uh, Denver Nuggets. They've struggled. They've had some tough times. They've lost five in a row on the road. This Denver Nuggets team. Lose another Washington Wizards the other night. Uh, I'm not laying nine with Denver right now. There's something a little amiss, something not quite right with this team. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, on the other hand, just continue to be themselves just in a ridiculously awful, awful run. One and nine straight up, 0 and 10 against the spread for the Cleveland Cavaliers in their last 10 games. So it's truly a pick your poison game, guys. I mean, do you want to lay nine with Denver right now? They're not exactly in great form, but can you take Cleveland? They get getting any number that they're getting <laughs> these days. It's not very uh, easy. So it's a game I want no part of from a side perspective. I kind of understand the, the thought process and the total being up. Cleveland's just been shredded defensively. Denver's not exactly been keeping people to lower scores of late. Um, it's getting up there, though. I mean, it's already moved up almost five points, 221 to 226. Um I agree with it, but it's getting up there now at 226. It's, other than that, just a lean to the over, nothing on the side. I don't want to trust either of these two teams at the moment. Uh, Connor, what about you, Denver, Cleveland? Yeah, I mean, Cleveland, I just was looking up. Since February 1st, they win with the T-Wolves every game. They've just gotten blown out, other than that Suns game where they lost by six. I mean, they're getting blown out either 20 to 30 points every game. Man, I'd like to take them. I'd need more points, I think. I, I, I lean with the Cavs a little bit. Um, I'd probably want 12 or 13 um, to feel more comfortable about taking them here. Um, and nothing on the total. Um, I'd lean maybe towards the under, just the way the Cavs can't score. I mean, they have a tough time getting to 100. So nothing on this one. This is a pass. I'd like to take – the Cavs were showing just a little bit better basketball. I, I'd go with them and especially catching a few more points. But I got to pass this one. I the, 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 the closest I would go from a side perspective, if I had to bet something on the side, which I'm not going to in this game, Denver in the first quarter or first half maybe because you would think you know. after losing to Washington, maybe it's enough screwing around. It's a bad, struggling, reeling Cleveland team. Come out and put your foot down in the first – you know, 24 minutes of the game. So maybe a nugget first quarter, first half lean, but even then I'm uneasy about it. Ski, are you in the same boat as us, uneasy about trusting either of these two teams right now? Yeah, neither team has been good. Um, Denver 2-6 and six against the spread their last eight, and Cleveland has just been money burners. I don't think they've covered any of the last 10 games. So um, I remember, too, I thought Cleveland was going to play a little bit better when they got healthier. And we just never saw it. So it's I don't want to look Cleveland's way. I understand not wanting to back Denver too, but that's the only way I can look. Denver, they're a little bit healthier than they have been. And um it's supposed to be a flat spot for Cleveland, but they had their last game postponed. So not really. The only way I look in this game is to back Denver. And I agree with the line movement on the total that um it would be an over type game for me. Denver is playing at the fastest pace over the last five games. Yeah, definitely. They've sped it up a little bit. You're right. Possessions per game bear that out in recent form. All right. Detroit, Memphis, Memphis, four and a half point home favorites, uh, 219, uh, the total uh, in this game. Uh, Memphis, uh, it's been a rough go for them, but they finally put it together uh, last game against uh, Oklahoma City. 
uh, a really good win for the uh, Grizzlies. One of those games, too, where they finally got everybody playing well at the same time. I mean, Taylor Jenkins, the head coach, has been talking about we've had one guy going most nights and everybody else struggles, but they got everybody on board in that OKC game. It was a balanced supporting effort to win that game. All Memphis starters scored at least uh, 15 points. Jonas Valanciunas and Grayson Allen at 22. Kyle Anderson at 20. Dylan Brooks, who the king of taking bad shots sometimes, but he had 17 <laughs> points uh, in that game against uh, – Oklahoma City, John Morant was good. Um, John Morant assists is a prop that you might want to look at right now because this guy's been uh, dishing out some dimes uh, of late. He's had nine or more assists in six of his last seven games. So uh, he's not he's really making a point of it to facilitate the offense, get his teammates the ball, not just shoot all the time. Uh, something to look at maybe from a prop standpoint tonight with Morant. Uh, this Detroit team, it's alarming how many second-half collapses they've had. That loss to Chicago the other night, it's not the first time they've blown a big lead at halftime. I remember they did it against uh, uh, they did it against Milwaukee early in the season. They did it against Atlanta uh, in a game earlier this season where they had a big lead and they coughed it up late. So if you like the Pistons in this game, you maybe look toward them first half. And to be honest with you, the Grizzlies have struggled in first halves. And the last few games, they've played better in the second half. So... This could be one of those games where Detroit has a good start and then Memphis uh, comes back and uh, gets them in the second half. I could see that happening. But, you know, Memphis figured it out a little bit against OKC the other night. And for what I saw out of Detroit, you could say, oh, they want to bounce back after coughing it up against Chicago, uh, just giving that game away. But another part of me says, hey, they could be still in a little bit of a catatonic shock uh, after that kind of a loss that they had the other night. And, you know, with Memphis playing their best game in a while, they may get some momentum from that. So I don't really love going against the Grizzlies here uh, in this game. Uh, I would probably lean to them minus four and a half, but just a lean for me in this game. Uh, not much on the total. I mean, Memphis has been more of an over team. They continue to cash overs, but Detroit, not so much. And uh, that's kind of that conflict I have when it comes to the total. What do you think, Ski, here with the uh, Pistons and the Grizzlies? Uh, I'll let you have the side. I like the total. Uh, like you said, Memphis been speeding it up. Uh, they're top 10 in pace. They went over their last six games. I trust both offenses more than I trust the defense. Detroit, their pace hasn't been great over the last five, but without Blake, I expect them to start playing faster. And without Blake this year, the over is 6-2. and two. Average line, 219.8, over by 9.69 points per game. So the number I have for this game was 223. Detroit also 9-5 to the over on the road. I like points in this game. All right. Uh, Ski liking the over here with uh, Detroit and Memphis 219, uh, 219 and a half. It's funny. They opened 222, so close to where you had it, uh, and yet the betting markets have uh, trended uh, under in terms of the movement here. But uh, Ski going against that with the over. Yeah, it's tough to bet Memphis under. I, I don't disagree there. Uh, Connor, what do you think here, Detroit and Memphis? Yeah, the Pistons kind of flip flop, especially lately, total wise. But the Grizzlies, yeah, just been a dead over team. Um, like Ski said, I think it's 10 1 and a push, something like that, their last 12. So I'd only look towards the over. I think it's pretty decent at 220. The Pistons can be slow and have a tough time scoring at times, but I think we can get, get over this total. And I think the side, I think we're right on here. I like Detroit more at home, catching points. They've had done well on the road, but usually a bit more points than this. Um, I just don't love it. If I had to take it, I'd maybe take the Pistons in the four and a half, but I would need more. So this game, I had to pass on the side. All right, Oklahoma City and the TNT crew couldn't get enough last night of saying the sound the alarm, ring the alarm bells, five, five alert alarm, whatever you want to call it for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and here we are with Milwaukee laying 10 and a half here uh, in this game against the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. Total 231, 231 and a half uh, in this game. Hell no, am I laying points with Milwaukee in this range right now? <laughs> Can't do it. I, I mean, Milwaukee at this point in time is, there's some serious issues. They've lost five in a row. You haven't been able to say that very often. Five of those losses, or all five of the losses, I should say, have come without Drew Holiday. He has been a impact absence for this Milwaukee Bucks team. And you, you, they look like they've lost themselves completely defensively without him. Not that they've been ever a yeah. great defensive team, but they've certainly been a lot better 
in the uh, this season with Drew Holiday and without him, they, they they can't get back and guard their man. They're letting they're letting anybody get to the paint. You're not supposed to score in the paint against the Bucks. And I'm seeing Toronto, you know, in back to back games, Siakam has treated the paint like a haunted house, like he's scared of it all season yeah. long. He can't go near it. Oh, I'm scared. I can't go in the paint. And he basically made the paint his home, his haven in these two games against Milwaukee. Did whatever he wanted, taking that b- b- ball to the rim in those two games against the Bucks. Yeah, uh, no back. So, you know, that's alarming. You know, you're seeing Toronto, of all teams, just a tat- little Fred Van Vliet, who, uh, albeit small guy, but he's got the the, the heart, the, the character, the intensity of a lion, this guy. Uh, he's just basically going to the rim and attacking Yanni uh, and all these bigs for the Milwaukee Bucks uh, regularly. And it's, it's really impressive to see uh, what the Raptors did, but it's also an indictment uh, of the way the Bucks are guarding the rim right now and just playing defense in general. And a lot of it has been because they've been without a Drew Holiday during this time. Uh, another defeat. And look, I, I understand Milwaukee already lost Oklahoma City recently. Uh, last weekend, 114-109 in OKC. I know you're going to hear some betters think, oh, revenge spot here for Milwaukee. But revenge spot doesn't matter. If you're struggling, you can't get things together. And Milwaukee can't get it together right now. Their game is just in sh- a little bit in shambles at this point in time. And how many times have we said, especially Ski and I, you know, when it comes to this Oklahoma City Thunder team, how good are they in the road dog roll? You know, how, ama- how amazing has this team been, you know, catching points? repeatedly now they fell short against memphis so they basically uh <laughs> proved me wrong the other night uh when they took on memphis but it's kind of a difficult spot you know sga missed a couple games he's back now uh oklahoma and oklahoma city does you know really make it difficult on you to pull away from them uh, the, rarely have they been a- able to just uh you know have themselves get blown out and even if milwaukee gets to that point i don't think they're playing well enough that i can trust them to blow out the thunder at this point. So I'm absolutely looking toward taking the double digits here with uh, Oklahoma city and get the plus 10 and a half. As far as the Milwaukee team is concerned, they did play an under finally last night, uh, but that was more. Their offense was dreadful in that game more than their defense really showed up. Their defense still pretty str- struggled. It was just, they weren't shooting all that well against the Raptors uh, last night. I would expect maybe this game to get back to more of a higher scoring way, the way it's been with Milwaukee for the most part during this losing streak and without Drew Holiday. So I would lean to the over, and I like OKC plus 10.5. Ski, what do you think? Your Thunder Bucks? Um, I would lean to the over. Bucks don't play any defense. They want to play up tempo, and OKC is pretty healthy as far as like Gildress Alexander, Horford, everybody in the lineup. So I would lean towards over. As right. far as the side – I agree with you as well. You know, we talk about it all the time. OKC um, on the road with one or less day rest, 10 and 2 this year against the spread. So um, it hasn't mattered who's been in the lineup, and they have everybody in the lineup. And you talked about Drew Holiday. They've lost five of the last six games um, since he hasn't been in the lineup. And it's just, I can't trust Milwaukee to win by double digits. They can't even get a win. So. I'll be taking OKC in this one. Yeah, Giannis and Ted Akumpo. If you don't think Drew Holiday matters, listen to what he says. We've lost one of the best players on the team and playmakers and best defenders on the team. He's not playing with us. It's not an excuse, he says. I'm not the guy that keeps excuses, as he's basically telling you an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you're not one to make excuses, but you're basically saying Drew Holiday's out and – that's that, that's that's your excuse right there. You're basically saying we can't win because this guy's out right now. Uh, we need him back. We need him back when it's safe for him to play. And yet he says, I'm not the kind of guy to make an excuse. You're just doing that. As you say that, you're basically saying we're not winning because mm-hmm. he's out. We miss him so much. He's a great leader. He's great on the team. He's one of our best defenders. And you're, you don't, yet, oh, but you don't make excuses, Giannis. Okay, whatever you say, man. Uh, that that's I couldn't help but laugh when I saw that. He's basically giving you an excuse, right? As he's saying, "I'm not a guy that makes excuses." Uh, it's pretty damn funny. Uh, yeah. But look, the old butt. I saw something really <laughs> worrisome out of Giannis. The camera got this shot of him at the end of the game after another loss, second straight to the Raptors last night, where it was the thousand mile death stare, doom and gloom stare, just staring into space. 
just looking like he has seen a ghost. And that tells you all I need to know about where Milwaukee's headspace is right now. They don't look confident. They look like they're a little bit fragile right now. And I'll be damned if I'm laying 10 and a half points with them right now. Uh, what do you think, Connor, with them against uh, OKC tonight? Yeah, Giannis is kind of a, a fragile guy, I've noticed. You know, after those playoff losses, you know, he had that, he had that stare like you were talking about. You, you know, he kind of looks a bit. Uh, he's a young guy. He's very talented. But, uh, yeah, definitely can get in those moments. I'm with you guys here. You know, I'm thunder with you guys as well. I almost took him against Memphis, but I didn't. Um, like you said, SGA is back. Ten and a half is crazy. The defense they play is just – they want to get up and score, but they, they don't go be, get back on defense. I know Holiday's out. He's a big key to that. But they don't get back and do anything. It's so erratic. They don't really need to do any sets. And they'll c- continue to have overs until – I think they need to slow it down. Maybe that's offensively, get defense. I don't know what they need to do because it's just ping-pong ball with them. You know, it's just ding, ding, going back. No one's – in form and there's wide open shooters all over the place. I guess I need a little, I'm not on the, the total here. It's high thunder. I don't love them on uh, overs, especially this high. Um, so I'm going to pass there, but I'm with you guys. I definitely got to take the 10 and a half until the bucks start winning at all or show any life. They shouldn't be laying 10 and a half and they could whip their ass, you know, but we got to go with the percentage of what's going on right now. And 10 and a half points is too valuable in a handicap in a spot like this, not to take. They've become so comfortable, Milwaukee, during this losing streak, giving up easy baskets defensively. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, they've no they've come forward. They're like, oh, we won't get back. We'll just come right back. We'll score. And they'll score. Okay, that's all right. We'll just come back and score. And then there's score. That, that, that defensive issue. And by the way, I was watching uh, last night's game, and Jack Armstrong, who's one of my favorites, he's the Raptors color analyst on television, him and Matt Devlin. Uh, they do a great job on television for Raptor games. Jack Armstrong made a great point last night about Giannis. He said he needs more tools in the toolkit. You know, if you take away him driving to the basket, you know, he's got to find way. And he said this, Jack, last night, and it was a great point by him. He's got to find ways to develop his other areas and elements of his game. All right. And find other ways to impact the game, whether that's a mid range game, whether that's getting better with your three point shooting, whether that's becoming a better passer out of the paint, out of the low post, draw the double team, kick it out. You got to find other ways to expand and become a more fluid, versatile superstar. Like your, your, your one element is phenomenal and your downhill momentum to the basket to drive to the hole is unbelievable. He's incredible with that. But to Jack's point, and he said this about Nurse last night. It's true. Nurse is one of the coaches that put the blueprint out there, you know, in the playoffs a couple of years ago, how you stop this guy. Exactly. And now it's up to Giannis now, not the, because the, the coaches have made their adjustment and it's been working. It's up to Giannis now to get in the gym, do the things all, away from the court that he needs to, to develop his game, enhance his three point shooting, get a little bit better mid range, become a better passer, do things other than just the one thing you can always do. And that's drive to the hole. And for goodness sake, improve your free throw shooting too. You know, you got, like I say, you got to improve your toolkit. You got to expand your toolkit. That's what Jack said about Giannis last night. He's absolutely right. Expand that toolkit. Cause right now there's one tool in it and that's it. And that's driving to the basket. You got to get other areas of your game better. Simple as that. And he's absolutely right about that. I think so. It's a great point. Uh, and Milwaukee, uh, we'll see if they can turn it around, but, I'm not ready to trust them laying 10 and a half tonight to do so. Phoenix and New Orleans. Uh, next game, we've got the uh, uh, Suns, three and a half point road favorites, 231 the total. Uh, this is definitely a Phoenix spot, you would think. I mean, uh, uh, absolutely a horrendous second half for them against the Brooklyn Nets uh, the other night. Huge lead at halftime, uh, but give the Brooklyn Nets credit. I think Ski and I said earlier this week, Brooklyn's starting to put it together a little bit. Of course, they just beat the Lakers albeit without Anthony Davis last night, but still a nice win uh, against the Lakers last night. Brooklyn's starting to get their shit together here. Uh, so you got to be uh, mindful of them starting to put it together. But still, it was a bad second half, bad defeat for Phoenix, who had a very comfortable lead. I'd expect them to be a lot better in this game. It's Suns or pass for me. The number's gone up. I agree. One and a half up to three and a half. I don't trust the Pelicans here a lot. I know they uh, lost another heartbreaker against Portland. Damian Lillard just went off. The other night against the uh, uh, Pelicans, uh, incredible performance, 40-plus points. How the hell is Luka Doncic, uh, uh, an NBA All-Star starter this year, ahead of Damian Lillard? 
Like this is definitely fan opinion because anybody with two eyes and watching basketball and knows basketball knows who's had the better season. And I, that's what I think the all-star starting lineup should be based on. It's not popularity. It's not who I like this guy. It's about who's had the better season this year. Who's had the better current season who by merit deserves it. And to me, that's uh, Lillard right there. And he didn't get it, but that's why I don't get too wrapped up in the all-star game overall and the starting line. I, I, like it's just because I know you're going to get stuff like this happening every single year. Uh, but nevertheless, um, Portland beat the uh, Pelicans the other night. Another great performance from Lillard. I think Phoenix probably wins this game and covers this number. And how can I not? How can I not go with another over with New Orleans? They have just been an over machine like crazy. Uh, I'm going to stick with it now as it keeps on cashing. Another over the other night with the Blazers. Uh, I'll go over this to 31, I believe, is where the total is right now in this game. Yes, 230 and a half, 231. I like the Suns. I like over the total here. Uh, Ski, what do you like here with uh, Phoenix and New Orleans? Um, you know, Phoenix doesn't usually play at a fast pace, but neither team has been playing very much defense at all. So I agree that I like the over. Pelicans have been going over every game, especially at home. And Phoenix went over four of their last five. So I don't think you're getting really a discount as far as the number, but the only way I can look at the game is to bet it over. As far as the side, go for it. No, no, go ahead. Okay, keep going. For as far as the side, um, it's, it's tough. And it's just the also for the over two, I like that Steven Adams is out uh, because less rim protection. They should play fast, faster. But um, as far as the side, that if he was in, I would like New Orleans here. Uh, simply because I know, I mean, like I said, neither team has been playing much defense. Phoenix defense has been better than New Orleans, but New Orleans is the number one offensive rated team, and they're the number three uh, rebounding team over the last five games. And I think it's going to come down to the rebounding battle in this game. Can they win it without Steven Adams in the lineup? I'm not quite sure. So I, I would want to take New Orleans, but that makes that gets me off. So I'll probably just go with the over. All right, so uh, leaning New Orleans, but uh, liking the over more ski with the uh, Suns uh, and the Pelicans. Uh, there's no doubt. Stephen Adams, of course, doubtful uh, for this game, left the uh, Portland game, and they've already been playing pretty fast and lacking defense. Uh, that could be even faster now without him on the court tonight and even more lack of defense for the uh, Pelicans with him not likely not to play tonight. Uh, looks like he's doubtful against the uh, Suns tonight. Uh, Connor, what do you think, Phoenix, New Orleans? Yeah, early on, I liked uh, the Suns unders, but they have been playing at a quicker pace than the Pelicans, you know, faster. Their offense efficiency, like you guys were saying, is really up there. Even though they lost four or five, <laughs> they're not winning, but a ton of points being scored. And Ski, you mentioned it. There's not a lot of value here, I don't think, but I'd only look towards the over 231 as well. Um, they played at New Orleans February 3rd. The Suns did and lost 123. 3-101. I don't like the Suns laying the three and a half here. I get why people do a little bit of wrench, but I just don't like it. It's a, It was a pass for me. I thought it was kind of equal. If you like the dog here, grab the three and a half. If you really think the Suns are going to bounce back, take them. I think it's pretty, pretty val you know, just loyal right there. There's no real value in my spot taking either side. Yeah, and there's still some question marks about the Suns on the road. The Suns on the road have had some suspect losses. Like they lost to Washington, I remember, mm -hmm. uh, earlier in the season on the road. Yeah. A lot of their best wins have been at home. So there's still some question about can the Suns consistently get it done away from home and when they're favorites? Uh, we'll find that out. It's certainly from a spot perspective, you would think Suns are bringing it tonight, you know, after the debacle in the second half against Brooklyn uh, the other night. But they've still been hit or miss in the favorites role. And to Ski's point about the total – this is a perfectly reasonable total for the over involving New Orleans. Not so much with Phoenix because you don't see Phoenix very often in the 230s. But I'm just hoping the uh, Pelicans pull them along here to another track meet. We'll see if that's the case. Uh, Toronto and Minnesota. We've got the Raptors, three and a half point road favorites, 225 and a half, the total 226. You would think nat naturally your first inclination might be letdown spot for the Raptors. They just beat the Bucks two in a row uh, in Milwaukee. But I don't think there will be one here because they lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves last weekend uh, in, well, not Toronto, in Tampa, uh, Toronto's home court this year, uh, in, a, in a stunning loss. It was a terribly played game by the Raptors. And I'm hearing the likes of Fred Van Vliet and uh, Ananobi 
uh, and company talk about how that was a game that uh, they, they want to get payback for uh, against Minnesota because they feel that we're better than Minnesota. We shouldn't have lost that game uh, on Sunday. So I don't think they will look past the Wolves. The question is going to be for a team playing their third road game in four nights after two back-to-back wins against Milwaukee, um, how much legs do they have left? How many? How much gas do they have left in the tank here? And is Kyle Lowry uh, going to be back as well? Uh, for the Raptors. Uh, He missed uh, last night's game. But if you actually look at the Raptors' record straight up in ATS without Kyle Lowry, it's actually pretty good. (laughs) And they showed it last night uh, in the victory against Milwaukee. They have been able to win games without him. He's questionable with that thumb injury that that kept him out last night. Uh, So we'll have to wait and see on that. But regardless, I like Toronto here. The price is short enough. Look, I was a little fortunate the other night with Indiana, minus five against Minnesota. Uh, they pulled it out in overtime, one by six. Um, but I still think this is not a Minnesota team I'm all that excited about. Uh, D'Angelo Russell still out. I know they got uh, KAT back, but uh, other than that, I'm not enamored with much on this basketball team with Beasley and Rubio. I'm not big fans of those guys in particular. They're inconsistent. They're erratic. And the Raptors, after just losing to Minnesota, yeah, I'm concerned. Back-to-back big games with Milwaukee, maybe a letdown. Maybe the fact they played last night, third road game in four nights, they run out of gas a little bit, but that's not going to keep me off Toronto. They're the better of these two teams. They're playing better basketball the last couple weeks. They lost to Minnesota last weekend. I think they bring it tonight. I'll lay the three and a half with Raptors, regardless of Kyle Lowry being in or out. Uh, I like Toronto here. Uh, Ski, what do you think here? Toronto, Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota's been covering numbers, but um, you're not really getting a discount when they're at home. Uh, I probably probably like them more on the road. As a home dog, they're five and five against the spread. And the only thing about Toronto is, I mean, how much depth do they have? How much legs? Like you said, they're one and three against the spread uh, without rest. They are seven and three against the spread their last ten games. But they have been a better offensive team. They played better defense. Uh, neither team has been really rebounding the ball well. So if I have to play it, I would play Toronto just because I think they've been playing better and they're the better team, but the depth issues definitely scare me. And I think the number has kind of came down a little bit um, to yeah. where I could start maybe to, to bet the over yes. as far as the total. Yep. The number half of the game is 225 and a half, and they've went over eight of the last 12 meetings. Toronto's been on an over tear over nine of the last 11, and uh, Minnesota's went over five of their last seven games. So I like the pace that will probably be played today, and I think they can get over that number. The over is 3-0 and on the second of back-to-back games for the Raptors as well, uh, the last three. 3-0 uh, and to the over, second night of back-to-back games. And these uh, two teams, they've been averaging uh, the last three meetings, Raptors and Timberwolves, uh, looking at 240 as the average points scored uh, in those three games. 240, and yet you're looking at a total that's 225. Uh, uh, I agree 100%. I'm actually going to probably ha- bet the over here. I- I'm just going to wait to see if yeah. I can squeeze out another half point or point if it goes down further. But even now at 225 and a half, uh, I think you can buck this. I think b- buck this under uh, move. I don't agree with it. I think we get out over this total. Remember that Minnesota-Indiana game, that game was just flew over the total. And it's not like Indiana is a offensive juggernaut, nor are they a team that pushes a great deal of pace. And yet that game with the Timberwolves and the Pacers the other night, that was that flew over the total with plenty of room to spare. I think this game gets over the total. So not only do I like the Raptors, now with this total down to where it is, I like the over as well. Uh, Connor, what do you think? Toronto, Minnesota. Yeah, that's where I'm looking is the total. From the initial, I thought, you know, going down was probably pretty good. It was a little high at 232, but this is going way down. We're talking six and a half, seven points. And, yeah, I like the other side. I think we get an over here. I'm going to go against it. I'm on the over. Um, I just don't love it here. Toronto's, Ski mentioned it, one and three. Okay, on back-to-back. The question mark with Lowry. They are playing better. I just still don't want to lay three and a half with them. I, I know it's short, and I don't have enough, you know, I guess, feel good about the – the T wolves to be taken three and a half. I'd want four, you know, five and a half, six at home here to feel comfortable. And that's probably what it been. If they weren't on a back to back, this probably was being five and a half of this was played last night. I just don't love it. Russell's out. It was a pass on the side. Yeah. It's been the talk of the, you know, Southern Ontario here, of course, where I am, I'm about one hour West of Toronto. 
uh, lots of Raptors fans, of course, and all of us that are the ones that I talk to and, and know, the talk all season has been, what is wrong with this team? Why is it taking them so long to get going? And I'll tell you exactly why they struggled early in the season. First, they didn't have OG Ananobi for a long time, and you see the difference he's made since he's come back at both ends of the floor. His offensive game continues to evolve. Look at the pass he made in the Bucks game last night. He made this unbelievable behind-the-back pass in that game. It was unbelievable. A tremendous play. And, of course, his defense is elite. That's number one. They didn't have him for a while earlier this year. And number two, for the longest time this year, Pascal Siakam and Norman Powell, two key cogs on this team, were awful. We're playing terrible basketball at the same time. Both of them are playing their best basketball of the season right now. Siakam, who had, was great in the two games against Milwaukee, and Norman Powell as well. So it's amazing. All of a sudden you get OG back. You have Powell and Siakam finally playing well at the same time. That's why the Raptors are playing better. So, you know, their team game has come together. So I think that is a big part of it. You know you're going to get Kyle and Fred playing well but the other guys have stepped and Boucher's been a revelation in the front court you know he's been way better than Aaron Baines has been uh in the absence of obviously Gasol and Ibaka who left in the offseason so things are coming together for this group a little bit again I think they're still you know their ceiling is like fourth or fifth best team in the east uh but at least now they're still playing a little bit uh, better and at least going to be a more competitive team come playoff time uh Utah and LA Clippers final game here we've got the uh Jazz, four and a half, five point road favorites, 224 and a half the total. I don't need to say much about this game other than why fade Utah at this point? Why? Why do it? Like, why put yourself through that kind of aggravation and worry and fretting and biting your nails and angst? And why do it? I mean, all they do is keep winning. All they do is keep covering. I know it's Clipper revenge because they beat the tar out of the Clippers the other night. I don't know if that matters. This team's just ridiculously on a roll uh, right now. They're getting the three-point shooting. Uh, their defense clamped down in the second half the other night. Uh, you know, Mike Conley, too, has been uh, banged up at times. It hasn't mattered one bit. Uh, Mitchell Clarkson, Bogdanovich has been big. Joe Ingles has been good shooting the ball late. Legal Bear has been a terror in the paint. I mean, it's just been a great team game from the Jazz, and that's why they're on this ridiculous run. As far as the Clippers are concerned, they didn't have uh, Paul George uh, or uh, Kawhi uh, in the last game. As far as we know in this one, it looks like uh, they may have status quo with these two teams, with these two guys, I should say, again tonight. Uh, Paul George, uh, questionable. Uh, he's missed seven straight games, uh, but they're still saying he's not likely to play tonight with that toe injury, but he's at least the door's been open a sliver that he might return, but no for sure thing. Uh, and Kawhi Leonard as well, still questionable for tonight with that leg injury. So you're still talking about the Clippers potentially being without both PG and Kawhi Leonard once again. Nick Batum is still out uh, for this team uh, as well. So, yeah, there's just, to me, no reason at all other than thinking you're smarter than uh, trying to outsmart yourself, outthink yourself, whatever the case may be. To me, there's just no reason to put the stop sign up and fade Utah right now. They just keep on winning. They just keep on covering. And it wouldn't surprise me to see that happen again tonight. Ski, what do you think here? Utah Clippers one more time. I usually say the same. Don't catch the falling knife. Utah's just been a monster straight up and against the spread. Um, I do think, I mean, Clippers have been playing well, too. They did lose that last game in Utah, but um, they were winning the first half and didn't even have anybody. Like, they didn't even have Paul George, Kawhi, um, half the players, a lot of the players that they're missing. So if they get these guys back, and I do think that they'll get majority of them, if not all of them, back today, I think the Clippers have some life. Five and two against the spread versus fifty-five. My bad. Five and two against the spread versus fifty-five percent when teams are better. And I like to always play teams to bounce back after they got embarrassed as a home dog. Um, that's the Clippers, and those teams are sixty-three, thirty-nine, and two against the spread, sixty-one point eight percent. So. I would be looking towards the Clippers. I think it's a Clipper spot, but it's always tough to step in front of the juggernaut. Yeah, it is tough, but at the same time, you know, at, at some point, you, even if they win tonight, you eventually maybe have to look to pick a, one spot maybe to go against this Jazz team, and they're not going to cover. They're, they aren't. Even though it looks that way right now, they're not going to cover every single point spread the rest of the 72-game uh, season. You know, it's just not going to happen. You know, you have to at some point maybe show a little gumption be bold and maybe step uh, step out against this Jazz team. Looks like uh, Ski's leaning toward doing that tonight with the uh, LA Clippers. Again, they'll keep an eye on the status of PG and Kawhi. We'll see if they're in there. But uh, if they are in there, they're definitely going to be better equipped to maybe finally 
have someone beat this Utah Jazz team without a doubt. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna just make that make that pretty clear really quick that I'm not betting this game <laughs> or until I I would have to definitely see yeah. all of those people in the lineup to even consider betting yeah. against the Utah Jazz. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I uh-huh. hear you absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly why I made sure I said leaning uh, to the Utah Jazz. We want to make sure everybody's clear on that uh, for sure. And yes, and as I also said, waiting to see the injury report and who's exactly cleared to play tonight for the uh, LA Clippers that is important. Uh, when we're talking about trying to or thinking about fading the Utah Jazz. Uh, Connor, what do you think here, Utah and L.A.? Yeah, I'm with what Ski's saying. I'm waiting. I don't know if Paul George, I think Kawhi might play a little bit more than him. Maybe they get both back. I don't think, I don't know. But I think Kawhi might play, this from what I've heard. Um, if he's in, I I would take the Clippers. Um, it probably might drop a couple points to three and a half. So if you think he's going to play, there's value here. But, yeah, I mean, how can you the Jazz? They just keep winning, just keep covering. But the more and more they keep doing this, as you see, they open up a line, and now look at this. It's going to increase, you know. The more wins, and they start becoming favorites on the road, then bigger favorites on the road, you know what I mean? So, And they could even win this game and not cover it. I mean, at five and a half, they're going to have to start playing some tight games. Um you know, I've been shocked by this Utah team. They've gone on these runs, but they've slid. Um, I've kind of been waiting. This has been a long one. They're really just killing it. Um, so, yeah, it's tough to uh, – falling knife, I get cut. But uh, here, I'm going to wait on the injury report, like you guys said. And uh, I-, I looked over the Clippers uh, catching the points. If they're in. Yeah, and, you, and to your point about the numbers getting, you know – increased and the power rating going up and up and up and up like a like a uh, like you know skyrocketing up on utah if we you know rewind back to december 23rd first day of the nba season utah plays the clippers and we're seeing the jazz here five point road favorites i think we're all ready to take put our de- mortgage payments and our life savings and everything on la clippers um, plus the okay. home underdog right <laughs> pretty much uh and, but that's exactly what this utah run has done for odds makers it's we've got to adjust uh we got to find some way to price utah so high that eventually it must come down and it hasn't done that yet but you would think at some point some point there's going to be and as soon as utah w- loses one or fails to cover and one i've seen this from the jazz last year two years ago they can go on a equally bad slide the other way I'm not saying this year's group is going to do that because it's it's hard to envision this group going on a long losing streak right now the way they're playing but they've done this before with these 18 and 2 type runs against the spread and then they come back and they're like 2 and 12 in the next 14. They've done this before. We've seen this before with the Jazz in the last couple of years. So that first sign of them losing a game, maybe that's the time to just keep an eye out for maybe the you know the roof to cave in a little bit on this team at least from a point spread perspective because we've seen them go in these tailspins after an extended uh, ATS win streak before. All right, that's the Friday card, guys. Great discussion uh, with the uh, NBA card on this Friday. Uh, We'll get to best bets uh, in just a second. Uh, Before we do, Connor, a word from our sponsors. What are they saying here on a Friday? Yeah, we all need another book. You got to have multiple books to get the best lines like uh, Ian was just talking about. Go to mybookie.ag at promo code PubSports. You get 50% off your debit or credit. But use the Bitcoin, you get 100%. So you put 1,000, you get 1,000, or a minimum of 100 bucks. You got to put it 100, you get your 100. Just go to mybucky.ag at promo code PubSports. Uh, go to bulksupplements.com at promo code PubSports. You get 5 to 10% off your order. Get all the you know amino acids, protein, creatine, all that shit to get jacked. And uh, lastly, manscaped.com. Get the 20% off promo code PubSports. You get the tree trimmer ball deodorant all those good stuff they got tons of good stuff over there at manscaped uh just hit promo code pub sports 20 percent off all right good stuff it is best bet time for this uh friday uh it's been in uh for me i've finally gotten a few in a row after just a little bit of a frustrating run where i've got things considered for best bet and i picked the wrong game but we picked three in a row that were right so starting to turn it around a bit ski what do you like for a best bet here on this uh, friday card <laughs> You know, this time I, I like a couple of things, so I'd rather go last and see if one of you guys take one of mine. Oh, okay, very good, Connor. Uh, the, ball, the ball is literally in your court. Okay, God, I like dogs, but I'm not. I'm gonna give out a favorite just in a bounce back. I like it first half, but I'll just go for full game. Give me Boston minus four. 
Best bet. All right, uh, Boston minus four. Best bet uh, for Ski Prof uh, for Connor Mack rather. Uh, Boston minus four uh, against Atlanta. Uh, best bet for us uh, Connor Mack in that one. Uh, I'll go next. Um, I've got. I'm going. I've got. Two, I've narrowed it down to two. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go Phoenix, New Orleans over 230 and a half. I like that one. I just, I, we're, the Pelicans overs are just uh, cashing right now. It was the best bet I think I used on the Wednesday show was Portland uh, and New Orleans, I believe. So I'm going to stick with it. It's working. Uh, the Suns, I think, are going to want to put the pedal down. I think you'd expect them to play much better, particularly offensively. They just couldn't shoot straight in the second half when they uh, uh, had that terrible effort uh, performance in the second half against Brooklyn. I think they'll be better tonight. Pelicans are still struggling to stop anybody. And against uh, Devin Booker and uh, Chris Paul tonight, that's probably going to be a trouble for the Pelicans defense tonight. And again, no Adams. So that means an even quicker pace, more possessions, weaker defense. Give me the over there. Suns Pelicans over 230 and a half for my best bet. Skeet, floor is yours. Best bet. Um, okay. I'll go to this game and I'll use um, – I just don't think Philadelphia – they haven't been covering numbers. Still banged up. Milton doubtful and beads back. Chicago oh, yeah. and that road that they thrive in. Road dog, nine and one against the spread. I'll take Chicago plus the points. I think it's plus eight and a half is last I saw, unless it's changed to eight. So uh that'll be my best You're bet. You're good. There. There's that was my runner up. That was my best bet runner yeah, up right too. there. Chicago <laughs> uh, plus the points against uh, Phil. That's the other one I was considering. And I'm like, you know what? There's enough about Philly and the, the that I like about this team that I'm like that's I think Chicago's the right side too and I think they'll cover but that's why I decided to go with the uh, total because uh, Sixers are a pretty good team at home but I still like Chicago there so that's why I went with the uh, Phoenix over but I agree with Ski's best bet I think it's a good one Chicago plus eight and a half against Philadelphia uh, best bet for a Ski profit that'll wrap up the show and that'll wrap up the week thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in we appreciate it. Uh, we are on three days a week with the NBA Closing Time Show, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so make sure you're here with us three days a week, breaking down the NBA card. Uh, Connor and I will be with you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, Saturday College Basketball uh, Closing Time Show. A lot of good matchups tomorrow. Duke, Virginia, Texas Tech, Kansas, uh, and, and many others. Uh, we'll break those Lots down tomorrow. Lots of games. Lots of games, lots of good opportunities, hopefully, as well. So we'll break that down tomorrow. Uh, college basketball closing time, Connor Mack and I at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. For Ski Profit, for Connor Mack, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a good Friday night. Enjoy the games and good luck in NBA action. And we'll see you Monday for another edition of the NBA Closing Time Show right here on Pub Sports Radio.